This is Korea's demilitarized zone. For more than 70 years, the DMZ has divided the nation between North and South, a war in suspended animation. It's become a tourist curiosity, home to a theme park and gift shops. But over the border in the North, people have been desperate to escape for decades. Every year, North Koreans risk their lives to escape. Some fleeing political persecution, others in search of a better life. But the reality is often very different. You have to fit in. It's a tribal society. They are always, in a way, outsiders. Those who escape are known as defectors. They rarely speak out publicly, still fearful of the regime. I'm here to meet the North Korean defectors who've made the perilous journey to get here. What has life in this country given them? And has it been worth it? Inside Seoul's Channel A TV, a group of women dubbed by producers as Defector Beauties is getting ready. They're guests on the country's popular variety show called Now On My Way To Meet You. It's that. The Defectors are from North Korea and the show is filmed on a set modelled on Panmunjom, a village in the DMZ. For many South Koreans, the defector guests questioned by the show's panellists are their only insight into the people who risk their lives seeking freedom in the South. The guests provide an entertaining takedown of North Korean culture and politics often poking fun at the regime. <laughs> 되게 좋은 일이죠. 김정은은 우리 프로그램을 감시를 위해서 보지만 우리는 수많은 북한 주민들을 위해서 너희들이 그런 거짓된 사회에 거짓된 국가에 살고 있다. 마치 거대한 트루먼 쇼 안에 살고 있다라는 걸 계속 이야기해 주고 있는 거죠. 그래서 Hee Jin Ryu is a regular defector guest. She started secretly watching smuggled South Korean TV shows and became obsessed with the life she could have if she escaped.
Hee-jin was one of the tens of thousands of North Koreans sent to work overseas to raise money for the regime. Working abroad gave her the opportunity to get away. Do you ever worry about the safety risks for your family, given that your parents are still living there, that there may be consequences for them from you speaking out on the program? Are you in contact at all with your family in North Korea? No, it's not possible for me because, um, yeah, my family is staying in the city, Pyongyang, so, yeah, this is not easy and not possible for me. <laughs> that must be really tough, not being able to speak to Yeah, them. so sad. <laughs> For many defectors, the reality of life in South Korea is a shock. Dr. Joanna Hosanyak has been documenting the human rights of North Koreans for more than 20 years. Her not-for-profit organization has become increasingly focused on their plight in the South. First and foremost, they look at the soap operas and they see how South Koreans are living their lives, what car they drive, how, what, what their apartments look like. This is the kind of, you know, expectations that these people have, that they will be better educated here and that they will have better jobs and that they will live better lives. There are nearly 34,000 defectors living in South Korea. Most of them are women and they're viewed with suspicion. In reality, majority of South Koreans don't want to know North Koreans or they are afraid of them even. They do not view North Korea as kind of the same country anymore. I'm meeting with a defector who's been here in Seoul since 2019. She's asked us to use a pseudonym because she's afraid of being targeted by the North Korean regime. Sunju was drawn by the glamorous South Korean lifestyle she saw on smuggled TV shows. Sunju and her husband made the dangerous decision to flee with their young son. They made it safely across the river, but the journey was far from over. They travelled for weeks through Southeast Asia, the most common route used by defectors. Soon after arriving, 
Sunju realized the glamorous South Korean life she'd seen on screen was nothing like reality. Okay. They are always, in a way, outsiders. South Koreans expect them that, oh, you speak Korean language, you know Korean culture, so you are South Koreans. And there is little understanding for that variety, a tolerance that you might be Korean, but you might have totally different history. OK, good. You have to fit in. It's a tribal society. You have to fit in. If you don't, you are an outsider. And I think many North Koreans are, in a way, in their country, and they are foreigners. The South Korean government does have a program aimed at integrating defectors. They're screened on arrival to weed out spies, before being sent for three months to a compulsory re-education camp. Byung-chol Im is the director of the HANA Foundation the government-funded organization responsible for the long-term care of defectors. During that time, they are completely secluded from the society. They are bombarded with all of this education of like how to open your bank account, you know, how to drive a car, how to control your money, where to apply for job, etc. What what kinds of kimchi and cheese and other type of produce you have. Many of them told us that the moment they are out, they've realized that they forgot everything, that they've been educated, and they really don't know how to manage their life. When the defectors are released, they're given a resettlement payment and a subsidized apartment. The subsidies are not enormous, and when they finish and you don't have a family, you don't have a system of support to fall back, it's very difficult for them to find better jobs because the fact that they were born in North Korea affects them for life almost. And so I think they are kind of pushed to poverty all the time. One criticism that has been shared with us is that the resettlement package is not sufficient to support the needs of defectors in the long term. Do you think that the program is really offering them the ability to adjust to life here? Uh, 당연하신 맞는 말씀입니다. 어, 우리 남한보다도 경제적 수준이 좀 뒤떨어져 있고 또 경쟁이 덜 치열한 그런 어떤 체제에서 오랫동안 어, 산 분들은 이 남한에 와서 이 경쟁이 치열한 사이에 이 사회가 요구하는 각종 어떤 어, 자격 또는 어떤 수준을 갖추기가 굉장히 어렵습니다. Across this modern city of almost 26 million people, many North Korean defectors live in isolation on the fringes of society. Gumok Ji knows what that's like. 첫째로 이 대한민국이라는 사회에 정착을 못하겠는 거예요. 우리 달저 북한은 
우리는 탈출할 때까지 컴퓨터라는 것도 못 보고 못 보고 왔어요. 컴퓨터라는 게 어떻게 생겼는지도 모르고 여기로 왔는데 여기는 몽땅 이게 그 시스템이 컴퓨터나 뭐 이런 걸잘 모르면 어디가 일하는 것도 많이 막히고 모르는 게 너무나도 안타까워서 막 도로 가고프고. 아들을 북한에다 두고 나 홀로 탈출을 했는데 그 이후에 아들이 알타가 그냥 북한에서 사망한 거죠. 하나밖에 없는 아들인데 그것도 진의 어린 나이에 서른 두 살짜리 아들을 죽였어요. 그렇게 하고 이제 나는 이 세상에 아무도 없어요. 남편도 없고 아들도 없고. Sounds incredibly lonely here. 네, 그래서 아마 그 위로움을 떨치고 싶은 마음이 예, 봉사를 잘 하게 만들어 온것 같아요. 여기 주세요. 너무 더 위로고 혼자서 감당하기 힘드니까 자꾸 누군가를 찾아다니면서 어려운 사람을 돕는 것으로. Gumok leads a group of volunteers who check on the welfare of defectors. Who are you visiting today? 이게 남한으로 온 분인데 계속 장기 환자로 앓고 있어요. 이분이 몹시 우울증이 너무 심하거든요. 그 북한에서 그 정말 많이 핍박을 받고. 안녕하세요. 어떻게 지내고 있어요? 어, 안녕하세요. 아유. 아유. 잘 지냈죠? 응. 아유, 참. 먹지 못해 힘이 없어서. 힘이 없어서. Young Shali has been living in South Korea now for three years. This is the only human contact she has each week. Yungshil fled North Korea after being imprisoned and tortured by the military. She'd been caught trying to speak to her son, who'd fled to China months earlier. She's now living with severe liver cirrhosis. You haven't been seeing the doctor because you can't afford to. Yeah. Do you ever regret coming to South Korea? It's time for the volunteers to get to work. This team are the only people that visit her during the week, and the rest of the time she doesn't have the energy to go outside. She's struggling financially. Her entire world, essentially, are these occasional visits from the team. They give her food, they give her some company, sometimes they do some health checks and they just help with some chores around the house, but they are really all that she's got. The visit lasts less than 30 minutes. Then they're off to the next one. There are still many more people to check on. The biggest wave of North Korean defectors escaped in the 90s. A devastating famine engulfed the North and is estimated to have killed millions. 
thousands of people fled over the border into China. I'm traveling to meet one of them, a few hours outside of Seoul. Her name is Su Jin Ju. She lives in the back room of the restaurant where she works. At the height of the famine, she and her family had to scavenge to survive. When a trafficker offered to take Sujin across the border and into China, she didn't hesitate. 죽어야 된다는 각오를 하고 넘어가야 돼요. 거기 넘어갈 때는 그러니까 내가 그런 각오를 그러니까 약을 지약 같은 거 그러니까 내가 잡히면 내가 죽겠다는 그런 걸 이렇게 약 같은 거다 가지고 다 떠나요. 떠날 때는 집에서 떠날 때는 Sujin swam across the Tumen River, which divides North Korea and China, but she wasn't free. Like many of the women fleeing the regime, she was sold into a forced marriage. Just months into her ordeal, Sujin became pregnant. The arrival of her daughter Chunmi changed everything. 엄마하고 같이 엄마밖에 몰랐어요 얘는. 예. 어, 엄마 엄마 그냥 엄마 꽁무니 그냥 그림자처럼 따라다녔어요. 예. 응. 내가 그래도 중국에서 이렇게 딸이 있어가지고 그것이 나의 희망이었고. That hope gave Sujin the courage to escape her marriage. She thought it was safer to leave Chunmi in the care of her Chinese grandparents. Sujin travelled for several months through China and Laos to South Korea. It took Sujin two years to bring her daughter to South Korea. Do you remember coming here when you were younger? Yeah. yeah. I just remember that um, green color. Chunmi's reunion with her mother was short lived. Sujin had to work long hours in the restaurant, so Chunmi was placed here in this shelter for the children of North Korean defectors. She's been living here ever since. How many people live here? Ten more people. Ten more? And where do you sleep? Oh, I sleep down. Okay, can you show me? Okay, cool. Sujin and Chunmi's separation has made their relationship difficult. Because 
그러면 그냥 어제 그냥 돈을 벌어야만 내가 그뭐 자식한테 잘 잘해준다는 그런 생각으로만 가지고 있었는데 제가 그 애를 학교에다만 맡겨놓고 제가 또 애가 많이 힘들어했던 것도 제가 많이 몰랐었어요. 그래서 약간 존재감이 없고 그냥 어, 난 살아 아, 있어도 되고 없어도 된다는 생각을 많이 들었는데 그래가지고 너무 우울하고 <웃음> 그렇게 지나다가 어느 날에 <웃음> 엄마랑 싸우는데 그 내가 이 세상에 없어도 되겠다는 생각이 들어서 어 자살을 했는데 그래서 이 X는 그 뜻이고 그래서 그런 표현을 했어요. Junmi's suicide attempt left her with serious injuries. Her doctors said she would never walk again. Yeah. 그래서 그 자살했는데 다시 살아났어요. <웃음> 네, 제가 많이 후회를 했죠. 음, 그냥 엄마로 엄마라 엄마라는 그 뭐랄까, 음, 그냥 사랑을 많이 듬뿍 주지 못했고 그냥 어제. 그래도 지금 자식한테는 많이 그때 생각하면 많이 미안하다는 생각밖에 안 나네요. 그때 정말 많이 미안했어요. For Sujin and Chunmi, time has not healed all wounds. They remain distant. 지금도 가족이 저한테 늘 힘든 존재이고. Chunmi is trying to find her own way. She's enrolled in her first year of university, has her own network of friends, and she's documenting her life on YouTube. I'm doing a painting. 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 정말 무겁다는 엄마라는 그런 긍지감이 많이 넘쳐나는 것 같아요. Two classes. Two classes. What have you got on? Drawing, drawing class and fly English class. 그런 내 누나 집에 언제가? Both Chunmi and her mother have paid a high price for their freedom. 엄마가 자유를 원해서 탈북에 했고. 엄마가 어떤 일이 있었는지 어떤 일이 겪었었는지 그 이유와 감정을 다 이해하고 그리고 내가 왜 여기 와 있고 